Hey folks, here's the recap of important topics you might have missed from the last two weeks. We'll begin with NASA's 3D CME animation constructed from the Heliophysics Observing Fleet. Beautiful to see the helical motion inside the larger leading CME cloud. Around that time, we started hearing rumors of a dangerous solar storm coming. It is still unclear where this came from, given that we only had a moderate coronal hole, no solar flares, and indeed, we had only a level 2 moderate geomagnetic event. Perhaps the study with the largest potential reach was the cosmic microwave background concept that it could have a dipole structure, which would rewrite distance and time, not to mention the early stage of the universe. Hopefully, they'll get the observations they need to tell yes or no here soon. Then we were on to the volcanoes. VEI-7 events are usually thought of in terms of Tambora, but not only do we have a fair chance for a VEI-7 to erupt again in our lifetimes, but the last three such eruptions, the best studied, are considered small level 7 events. Forgetting numerical scale and going instead with just ash release and sky cover, we have been underproducing as a planet for a long time, and we're overdue. We also had yet another story in the space weather and human health realm, another potential connection between brain activity and the effects of space weather on Schumann resonance. That was what Dr. D'Amico discussed briefly at Observing the Frontier. EEG measurements demonstrate clear changes in electrical activity during solar storms. We saw the warm Arctic joining solar minimum as another contributor to jet disruption, both the jet streams and the polar vortex. I'll admit, I didn't see that reinforcement of the future coming from the mainstream. And on top of that, a desalinization related discussion of ocean current disruption. The importance of the salinity profile of our planet must never be ignored. And yesterday we learned that during Earth's magnetic reversals, something we've seen evidence may be happening now, the ionosphere conductivity layer jumps to higher altitude. We were able to find an excellent description from just 2016, which we showed again this morning of how this is the condition present in strong solar storms. We will be continuing to explore the implications and these changes in the future. Then we had some delicious icing on the electroquake idea. After this paper release, I checked back and found the skepticism have dwindled to about zero on the concept of electromagnetic precursors to earthquakes. One can truly say that the shift in the field has moved from discussing possible connections to debating the importance of the data to now demonstrably repeating the correlations time and time again. Don't miss that video or our two interviews with top university scientists on the universe. We've got more scheduled in the future, but I wanted to get the first two out pretty much together. The previous recaps are listed below this video, and whenever you are watching, I'll see you in the morning for the regular daily update. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.